Hi, welcome to the tutorial on stat graphs or statistical analysis graphs. We're going to use stat graphs throughout the year. Um, most specifically, we're using one right now on a bottle lab. So if you missed the settling in where I covered this, this was a settling in originally, then you're definitely going to want to watch this video and take notes in your journal. Make sure you know how to make stat graphs uh, for science class. So go ahead and uh, peruse through this video, pause it as you need to, rewind it as you need to, and go ahead and go through it that way. And one way you can do that is just simply by uh, taking a look at your manipulated variable. If your manipulated variable is a type of something, you're always going to make a stat graph or a statistical analysis graph. So uh, take a look at your manipulated variable, decide if it's a type of something or a scale of numbers. The scale of numbers would be a line graph. Uh, if it's a type of something, a stat graph. So this was actually from a settling in, uh, if you missed that settling in, where I sort of talked about how you make a stat graph. And so you're welcome to do this in your journal. If you missed that day, it might help you uh, follow along with me. So what I'm going to do is teach you right now how to make a stat graph using the data uh, that's in the data table. First thing, why is it a stat graph? Again, you're going to look at the manipulated variable. That's the manipulated variable. You'll notice it's not a scale of numbers, but rather a type of something. When you set up your axis uh, for a graph like this, uh, you put your manipulated variable down here just like before, except you just spread out your two variables here, Rosing, Null, and Dina Star. You just spread them out across your x-axis, give them a little space uh, so it looks nice on your graph, not right next to each other. And then the other difference is how you come up with your um, range here on your graph, your uh, y-axis from 40 to 60. If I just looked at my averages, I might not come up with that range that I have here. So let me explain why I went from 40 to 60. What you need to do is look through all of your data, including the trials, and find the lowest and highest number. When we made a line graph, you just had to look at the averages. So we look at this whole thing and I see that 41 is my lowest. That's why I left space at 40 here so I could still graph 41. And 58 is the highest. That's why I decided to go all the way up to 60. And then all you're going to do is you're going to put a dot or a data point for every trial. I'm not sure if that came through. So you're going to put a data point for every trial. So you'd put one for 43. You'd put one for 49. I'll cross them off as I go. 49. Fifty-eight. Fifty-three. Forty-five. Fifty-two. Okay. So before we go in, and those could be in a better straight line than mine are. Mine are a little crooked there. Don't put a dot for an average yet. Let me explain. First of all, at this point, uh, what I explained to the students is, and most people figured it out just through a little questioning, why are not all these trials, you did the exact same thing six times in a row, why in the world do you not get the exact same number six times in a row if you do the same thing? And the reason for that, if you haven't already said it to yourself, is that this difference here in each trial has to do with error. And so uh, this is an error, a range of errors in our experiment. So one way we can estimate um, something, I'll explain that in a minute actually, is we put a box around our range of error. Give yourself a little cushion. I usually end up putting, I usually end up putting the box not exactly at the highest data point, but I usually split the difference between the, the top two data points and the bottom two data points. And you would just connect those with a box. And then for the average, you're going to put a line, not a data point. So you put a line right here, you put an X under it, and you write equals 50. So X equals 50. So that's the average. And then you do the same thing for the Dina star skis. So you would plot 41, 45, 
56, 50, 42, and oops, another 50. If you get two 50s, you just put them side by side. And then you're going to box in the exact same way. You're going to split the difference right here between those and split the difference between your last two. Where it's 47, you're going to put an average bar. And you write x equals 47. So in this case, um, what you see is you have in here a range of errors for this also. So here's the problem. If I redid the entire experiment, is it possible that I would get a different average than 50? And the answer is yes, because these are random errors. And I might get 47, or I might get 53 if I redid the experiment. And same thing here. I might get any average likely would range somewhere in this box. So then the, there's a problem. How do you know if it's the brand of ski that caused it to be a little bit faster for this average? Or if it was the errors in the experiment that caused that difference. And that's the problem. Well, this statistical analysis graph gives us a way to analyze that. What we like to do, or what I like to do, you wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily do this on a real graph, but this is how you'd figure it out. I pretend this is a game of battleship. And here, here are my, two, my sh one ship, and here's the other ship. And if you shoot a cannon out of this thing, it would sink the other ship. In the same way, if I shot a cannon out of my average here, it would sh sink that ship. And it really only takes one of the two sinks, uh, one of the two ships to sink, to cause uh, to say that it's actually air that caused this difference. So if you sh sink a, a ship, you would say air caused the difference in the average and not the brand of ski. So I would not spend any more money on these skis, even though the average was a little higher than on these skis. Because if I redid the experiment, it's very likely that this would be 50 and this would be 47. And so it's just error that causes the difference in the average. We would then say that these are not statistically... different. So there's no real difference at all between those averages. We're going to give you a quick tutorial on the other kind of graph we've made. You guys should be really comfortable making line graphs now. And so I'm going to teach you another kind of graph that is uh, what's called a statistical analysis graph. And uh, the first thing you need to know about a statistical analysis graph is when do you make a statistical analysis graph or a stat graph for short versus a line graph. Well, let me show you what it looks like if there is a statistical difference. I'm not going to use these numbers right here. I'm just going to make up numbers now. So I'm just going to zoom in on the screen. And let's just make up some data here. So let's say you had some trials that plotted on here about like this. You would box those in. You'd put x equals, that looks like about 57. You do the same for the, your Dina star skis. So here's your trials, your, your errors. You'd box those in. You'd put here, oh, x equals about 46. Well, now in this case, you can, first of all, just using common sense, see my errors here? They don't come anywhere close to my error range in this one. Uh, so right away, you're going to know that these are statistically different, and it's the brand of ski that caused the Rossignols to be faster than the Dina Stars. So I would spend more money in this case for the Rossignols than I would the Dina Stars, because these are statistically significant. If I use the battleship method, that I showed you in the previous slide, you can see that misses, and so does that. Since they both miss, we would say they are statistically significant. They are statistically significant, and it's most likely the brand that caused the difference, not errors alone. 
So uh, that wraps up uh, how you make a stat graph and when you make them. Uh, I hope the tutorial was helpful.